Hi guys, um, second podcast, um, we're sitting down in the bathtub, mm -hmm. and today's topic will be dreams and sleep, but no f uh, Yeah, we're not gonna say, so yes. <laughs> so, what was your last dream? Yeah, do you remember like... Um, I would normally write them down, my dreams. I wake up in the morning and I can remember very clearly what I just dreamt about so I will yeah the first thing I do is is to write them down in my phone or in my um in a dream book mm -hmm. and then <laughs> you're gonna get your wine <laughs> and then um um yeah and I have them like in my phone and notes page and then I and I copy them down to this dream book that I have anyway so I have very I'm trying to remember what the last one I had was My most recent crazy dream mm. <laughs> was um, it ch it like changed my life for like two weeks because oh. you, I had you know the white stripes yeah <clears throat> yes yeah do, do you know the white stripe guys leave it in the comment below yeah leave it in the comment <laughs> if not then sort yourselves out um, I had a dream that um, I became a music journalist for mm. the Guardian for the Guardian for the Guardian and I was like a junior music journalist and yes. I had a boss. And we had an assignment, which was to go to Nashville, where Jack White lives. And he has, like, um, a record store mm -hmm. and, like, a record pl pressing plant, because his whole thing is bringing back vinyl. Yeah. And I had a dream that I went to Nashville with my boss. Yeah. And um, met Jack White. And we ended up f***ing <laughs> and then having a relationship. And I like stayed... A proper relationship yeah, with Jack and, White. Yeah, and yeah. I stayed on in Nashville, and my boss went back to London. And the dream was so detailed and so kind of, you know, long in inverted commas yeah. that it was like, well, I was there and then like having sex with him and then staying on and then, um, and then like all these details of like being in this really long stretched car with him and him turning around and, and saying to all his people, like his people, um, You know, Imogen doesn't like it. Like, she's scared of all the fans who are taking photos outside. Like, yeah. somebody get that girl a f hoodie. Oh, sorry. Somebody get that girl, like, something to cover her head with. Yeah. And going to, like, um, immigration control. I was trying to cross some border in, like, into Mexico or Still something. Still Jack White. Still Jack White. And not having a passport and not having an ID on me, which is quite kind of a classic yeah, but scenario. Yeah, I Jack White, it doesn't matter. Really. But thinking that I would need one and then him having to go up to the woman and be like, hey there, darling, and like yeah. sweet talk his way. So yeah. anyway, when I woke up, I had I told, I mean, like my whole family, all my closest friends, because I was deeply, like emotionally changed by it. And I knew that it was going to have an impact on what I spent the next like week doing, which was listening to every single song he's ever put out. To try to find some like hints if he feels yeah, the same. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And to like just yeah, so I listened to all the White Stripes albums, watched all the like documentary made about them, listened to all his solo stuff, mm -hmm. listened to his stuff that he does with the raconteurs, and yeah. This is other band, I think as well. I think he has like three. Not sure, maybe I'm mistaken. Him, the White Stripes, and the raconteurs, which is the yeah. one that he did in between. Um, but then usually the dreams are based on some desire you have in real life. So do you have like a crush on him? But I've I never thought that I had a crush on him. That's what's so weird. I just he had a new album out and I read the the review. Yeah. And then I went to sleep and I think I said to someone I texted my friend Alex, saying, um, uh, Jack White like is he attractive? What do we think about that? And she was like, mm, I don't know. And then I went to sleep and I had this dream. I guess he's kind of attractive. He is. I think he is attractive. Um, he's not like beautiful in the original sense, but no, there's really something. Really something. He's very magnetic, I think. Yeah. And I like I the fact that his like vision stylistically is so strong. Yeah, yeah. And has been consistently strong and unfailing with each of his projects that he's done. Yeah. So with the white stripes, he always wanted it to be three colors: black, white, and red. Mm -hmm. And everything was three colors. Like, the, like all, the NS, even NSDAP. Yeah, like even his roadies on the on tour would wear like black suits with black hats. Right. And then Third Man Records, which is his like record store and the plant that he does, it's all yellow and black. And everyone wears yellow and black and everything's yeah. yellow and black. And I just love that, the dedication to the vision. Yeah, but I think his, his wife is also like kind of fit, fitting in this style. They're not married anymore. They're not married anymore. This, the redhead supermodel, yeah. Karen Nelson. So I was just 
She's so I'm not sure beautiful. if she, she was a super. Was she super? Mm. Because she, they were like both in this movie, uh, Coffee and Cigarettes. Oh no, that's Meg. Meg White. Yeah. His, his first yeah. wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But really interesting. That like, Jim Jarmusch movie yeah, is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Used to be my favorite movie, but just because I didn't know any other cool movie, I thought this one is a really good one to take. It's. it's I think I I start I watched it because I wanted to impress some guy that knew. Mm. All of Jim Jarmusch's oh, right. work ever. Or Jim Jarmusch himself. Yeah, my mother of my celebrity crushes. <laughs> yeah. But like the, the thing, coming back to the dreams, like for me, I always feel that sometimes I'm really thinking intensively about something for days or weeks, mm. and then it takes still like one month or two weeks at least until I start dreaming about it. Really? Yeah. So there's like this really time period always. So I couldn't think like today about something and tonight I'm dreaming about it. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's exactly how my dreams work. Yeah. It's all immediate. Because, yeah, okay, then apparently it's really d different from present. But have you ever um, like looked into lucid dreaming or had any... Absolutely, I read this book from... I don't know who it was, but... He also suggested to write like a kind of dream diary mm -hmm. to then achieve this um, mental state of being able to... for lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I guess it really requires training and training and also some kind of... National, uh, natural capacity to be able to do so. Uh, really difficult. Have you had that? I well, had the weirdest thing where I read one article yeah. that I saw on, I don't know, like Noisy or something, equally, whatever, and um, read it when I was like on my year off from between school and uh, uni. Yeah. And I was like 18, 19, and one reading of just one thing about lucid dreaming, immediately I started to be able to lucid dream. It's crazy. And then switch it I, off when I didn't want to. It's it's mad. But that, but like. But I think it, it's made all my mm. dreams doubly, doubly, triply, quadruply trippy, because I will be aware in some sense that I'm in my dream. Exactly. And it's, it means that I take um, like uh, conscious responsibility for what's going on. Right. So often I have dreams that are very, very realistic and detailed. Yeah. And okay, Jack White seems like out of the kind of like out of the realm of possibility but it sort of isn't and it means that like reality and daily life mm -hmm. as I always say to my friends my touch like my I don't know relationship with reality is like shaky at best yeah <laughs> but I guess this is like why people are aiming for having lucid dreaming because then they can try things they couldn't do in real life yeah and they can figure out I find that quite sad in mm. a way yeah but like escapism the... through dreams uh, I don't know. Escape. Yeah, I mean, I get your point, but uh, there may be much more to it. Anyway, the book I was reading was just like suggesting that to to learn that lucid dreaming, you have to in the dream figure out that it's a dream. Mm -hmm. And the book was like suggesting you should try in your dream, if possible, I don't know, to look at your clock or look at the newspaper to just be conscious about a dream. the kind of time space you're yeah. in. It's like, but then. It's really difficult to like jump over this like threshold and getting caught. I mean, it's absolutely, absolutely. Do you ever have dreams where um, you, when you wake up, it's difficult to adjust to the fact that it's not real? Yeah, yeah. And do you the feel then like some crashing sense of like sadness or whatever in your tummy? Um, absolutely, a lot of times, and then even. Sometimes I think there are different stages of waking up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think you're awake, but you're not really. You're still like, yeah. And then you're waking up again, and then you think... Oh. And like, even sometimes it takes some minutes, because sometimes you're dreaming about something, like you have to do something, or you did something terribly wrong. Mm. Um, you wake up, you think, oh God, how should I fix that now? And then it takes some minutes to realize that, oh, it was just a dream. Yeah. But this, the, the emotion certainly starts with you for a longer time. Do you think your dreaming affects your sleep? Well, or would you just sleep regardless? What do you mean? I mean, as in, I I will be really tired. Like waking up from my Jack White mm -hmm. dream, mm -hmm. I was exhausted. Yeah. And I had to like get into uh, bed at like eight p.m. that night, the mm -hmm. night after. I think generally that when I dream, it was a good sleep because it was a very deep sleep. Mm -hmm. So I reached the REM phase of my sleep. Uh, which doesn't happen so often to me because usually I wake up like every two or three hours so I don't really reach this moment of dreaming but now since I'm using like melatonin kind of sleeping pills from time to time having much deeper sleeps and therefore more dreams mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I guess when I'm not dreaming, I tend to be more tired in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know this kind of um, love dreams? What do you mean? Like wet dreams? But like when you're honestly deeply in love with someone in the dream or with your crush or mm -hmm. lifetime, whatever. Um, and you really like have, like it's a beautiful positive dream and then you wake up and you just feel amazing. Mm -hmm. This is really something I want to have. You've never had that? I haven't had but like it's long ago. But like, what do you mean? But well, then explain it more. I guess just that, because usually I You're think... You're just a die-hard romantic. <laughs> I guess so. But usually you dream about, like you do kind of rework or process or elaborate on some failures or thoughts you had. Mm. But like this love dreams is just absolutely positive. You're together oh. with your um, crush and you wake up and you just feel amazing even though you realize that it was just a dream you still feel amazing because you get like the chance to have the feeling of how it would be to be with this person oh so you mean with someone who it's n it doesn't match with your actual relationship in real life yeah like for example you dream having a relationship with Jack White apparently and you might not have this in real life, but in a dream it just worked perfectly and yeah. there was nothing wrong about it and you wake up and you just... But isn't it more heartbreaking to wake up from a dream where it's about someone you actually know? You mean then realizing that... Yeah. But it may also be like kind of motivative or... Well, I was going to ask you, have you ever had any dreams that have revealed to you something important? I don't, like... I don't think so, no. actually. Or that have predicted something? No. Mm. <laughs> the dreams are more like um, thinking about what I was thinking two weeks ago mm -hmm. about. It's just like re. But I guess generally, because this is why I really wonder that you have like so. Uh, dreams like you just told the story, but. Because I have the feeling that my dreams are just rethinking about reality and just like digesting it without necessarily giving any hints of or any mm, positive. But maybe that's a reflection of like how you and I differ as people because maybe I do a lot of like overthinking and processing mm -hmm. like in the day when I'm awake. Yeah. So I'm constantly like deconstructing ideas and being like, oh God, what does that mean? Or, or being like, oh wow, imagine this. Whereas you're quite pragmatic. So maybe you're not thinking about it. So then your dream is time to like um, digest things. Yeah. Not sure if I would break me down to pragmatic. <laughs> well, that's a bit mean. <laughs> did you ever had like... But you're, I don't know, maybe we're not dwelling on stuff as well. Like when you, do you know these kind of dreams when you're ill and you kind of can't do anything, you're kind of sweaty, you have yeah. fever and you're just like daydreaming kind of, Like this is the best state of dreaming always when you're not really sleeping but you're not awake either. Yeah. And there is something going on. Those are, those are times, yeah. the times when, because my dreams are normally there in 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 structure in terms of like physically where they are and who mm -hmm. they're with are quite realistic even mm -hmm. with Jack White like as I say it's not beyond the realms of possibility fingers crossed but um, <laughs> <laughs> all the best from us <laughs> but I mean when I'm like ill or sleep really hot and sweaty that's when I'll have dreams that are like in where they take place unrealistic so I remember I once was sharing a bed with my friend and he was like this really hot body next to me and I was really boiling. And I had this like heavy cover, but I was too drunk, like having gone to sleep too drunk to take it off. Right. And I was having this dream about like all these things that I'd watched recently coming together. So it was like, I like, um, what's that? A Studio Ghibli, like Japanese film hmm. mixed with David Tennant I think being our in. Loves Studio Ghibli. <laughs> yeah. In like Doctor Who and this other show that he was in which is near, was set near where my mum lives. Mm -hmm. And I was so confused and it was terrifying because like I was both watching it in my lucid state and also I was like, um, you know, that actor Jared Leto. Yeah. I was like him in the dream, <laughs> but I was also watching myself being Jared Leto and being David Tennant's assistant, like the Doctor Who thing. And it was terrifying. And when I woke up in the morning, I was like, I have to leave this bed and I have to go home. And I was like, my hair was like stuck to my neck. Yeah. But it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> this sounds very intense. It was really intense. It was like a dream that you'd have um, if you took acid or something like that, like a hallucinogenic and then you fell asleep. Like if you're at a festival and you take something and then you, you are like, oh, actually, I'm really tired. And you pass out for like half an hour 
what goes on in your head then that was like what that dream was like yeah what this, this is a good point what's the influence of drugs when it comes to dreaming in life <laughs> In life um, would be maybe another podcast, but for dreaming. Tune in for next week. <laughs> Talk about drugs. <laughs> or for tomorrow. Um, what do you mean? What's the influence of drugs on dreaming or on sleep? Or sleep generally. Well, depends. Uh, yeah, it depends what you, what you take. I used to have this weird ability where, like, um, if I um, had like taken something that should necess- necess- necessarily be like an upper and would make me really um, like energetic. I could fall asleep. You could. Yeah, so I had, like my friend um, came to stay with me in Edinburgh, and we she, I was exhausted from like partying the night before, but I thought I've got to go out with her because she's mm-hmm. come up to visit me, and so I took a pinger and uh, like a ecstasy pill, and I fell asleep immediately afterwards. And no, it wasn't ecstasy pill. <laughs> no, it was because I'd taken like you know it's twin sister the night before, mm-hmm. and yeah, so there's this weird thing where I can kind of do that, but. Uh, I guess I don't know. Like it doesn't even have to be like synthetic kind of drugs, but even like a continuous daily alcohol consume mm. really changes the, like your sleeping habits. And there, there's like this point when you just sleep because you have to sleep because to be able to drink on the next day again. Yeah. So you don't like as you go to bed now you're tired. Okay, it would be nice to lay in bed. No, you just like sleep because. You feel like, okay, when I sleep now five hours, it will be fine tomorrow and I can do mm. have fun again. So you're very functionalizing to sleep. And it's really, like, sleep, like, always felt for me is the thing that is affected the most and the strongest. But do you, like, I don't know, I feel like with alcohol, when I've had, like, I don't know, if I'm really fucking wasted, I could just sleep, like, I have to sleep. Like, I have this homing pigeon instinct, which is why I often end up leaving nights out on my own even when I should just like leave with someone else and without my stuff uh, because there's something in my body that's like "Mm -mm." you need to go home like you need to go home now and I really I thought you would never go home except someone else would tell you no 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 like it's this thing of if I've drunk but this is when I'm so so wasted that like I I think I'm okay I can still speak but like I don't know what's going on my body will be like Imogen yeah. So I will just, especially in Tallinn, I'll just walk home. And often it's happened where I, f- I leave all my stuff with someone else. And then I get home and I'm like, <laughs> and I have to go all the way back. But like, there's this instinct just to get out and go home, which I think is like... But then you go to bed or what are you doing then? And then I go straight to bed and I fall asleep. And, right. I, and I often will wake up fully clothed. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I feel like I've revealed too many habits to the outside world. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys, and we'll be back by tomorrow with um, another interesting topic which we can't talk about now. No. No, we can't. So, yeah, stay electric. Um, 